Hey my dear data friends, it's Nicola from Data Mozart. In this video I'll show you how to create your first lake house in Microsoft Fabric. Although it's pretty straightforward process, there are certain prerequisites to be aware of. So in this video I'll walk you through the whole process of setting your lake house and uh, uploading some sample data to practice with. Stay tuned! I'm currently in my Power BI or Fabric tenant and uh, first thing that uh, we need to do in order to be able to create our fabric items is to enable creation of fabric items on a tenant level. You can also specify this on a capacity level but in this case since I have just one capacity uh, in my fabric tenant so here under uh, uh, I go to admin portal and then under tenant settings you see this option users can create fabric items. This will enable creation of fabric items on a tenant level. And in this case, since this is my private uh, tenant, I will enable it for the entire organization. In your case, you may want to uh, enable this option just for the specific security groups from Entra ID. Okay, that's one thing. The other thing is that the workspace that you plan to use for creating a lake house must be assigned to a fabric capacity. In this case, you see I have a lot of uh, different workspaces here. Some of them are assigned to my fabric capacity, like this one data, this one Power BI Bootcamp, and this one DP600 Playground, which we are going to use uh, in this demo. But also there are certain workspaces that are not part of, uh, of my fab uh, 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 fabric uh, capacity. In this case, it's Test Pro and PS Demo. So what's going to happen if I go to workspaces, PS demo, and then I'll switch to data engineering uh, experience. And when I try to create a lake house, it will not allow me to do it. Uh, because this workspace, first of all, it doesn't belong to a fabric capacity. And other than that, it, it's also a regular uh, Power BI Pro workspace. So it belongs to share capacity. So it's not possible to use these workspaces to create fabric items. But as soon as I switch to this DP600 Playground, let me first show you what happens if you are in Power BI experience in DP600 uh, uh, Playground. So let's go here and I'll try to create a new lake house. But since I'm in Power BI experience, there is not, not an option to create a, a, a lake house from Power BI experience. To be able to do this, I need to switch to a data engineering experience. So I go to data engineering and now I see this lake house option available. So let's call this one DP600 LH and I'll click create and let's wait for a few moments for uh, fabric to create our lake house. So it's still being created, although I can see those tables and files uh, on the left hand side in my explorer. You can also use uh, one lake explorer uh, through your file system like a windows explorer and let's wait for a few moments and i'll load some data here so i'll go here to files section of my lake house and select upload this is the most straightforward uh, option and let's say that i want to include four csv files uh, from my uh, local machine so this is the data uh, related to Contoso sample database. So I have three dimension tables, customer date and product and fact internet sales. So now it's here and what I can do, I can load all of these uh, data to tables. So because at this moment, when you have this as a CSV file stored, you can't basically query the data using SQL Analytics endpoint or create a direct lake semantic model for Power BI, but more on that later. So I'll load all of these uh, files into tables. So essentially what I will do is just to transform those files and load them into a lake house as a Delta format. If you don't know what Delta format is, I have you covered. Uh, so there is a, a video that I already recorded uh, that explains how Delta and Parquet formats uh, work. Let's wait for a few moments. 
And now I have all of my files loaded as a delta tables in my lake house. You see dim customer, dim date, dim product and fact internet sales. Now from here I can click on, for example, uh, dim customer and it will show me the data preview. Uh, also from here I can query this data and uh, maybe I will go back to a workspace to show you. So you remember I just created a new lake house, this DP600LH, but two additional items were created automatically for me. Uh, those two items are SQL Analytics Endpoint and Semantic Model, default Semantic Model. So first SQL Analytics Endpoint is being used there so that you can query the data from a lake house by using T-SQL language. And you can use T-SQL language just to read the data from the lake house, so you cannot write or change the data in the lake house by using T-SQL. And the other item is default semantic model that uh, that is something that comes out of the box uh, provision for you. So you can go and immediately start creating Power BI reports in direct lake mode by using this default semantic model. Is it a good idea to create Power BI reports on default semantic model? Mm, not necessarily. I will go in one of the next videos deep to uh, explain the differences and advantages of using custom versus default semantic model. But just uh, this moment, keep in mind that uh, whenever you create a new lake house in Microsoft Fabric, you will automatically get provision also SQL Analytics Endpoint and default semantic model. So again, let's go back to our uh, lake house and you see data is being uh, previewed for me. And from here, I can also create a new semantic model, which will be a custom one that I already mentioned. But what I can also do, I can go and uh, grab a SQL Analytics endpoint. Let's go and grab a SQL Analytics endpoint connection string. And I can connect, for example, from, uh, from external tool database engine. And I can connect and let's connect to our lake house and expand our tables from a lake house. And once in SQL Server Management Studio, on the left-hand side, uh, I can see all of the tables, Delta tables that currently exist in my lake house. And from here, I can query the data uh, regularly, like I can do with any other uh, relational database or uh, fabric warehouse. So for example, in this case, I'm returning all the records from our uh, dim product table. One last thing that I want to show you is how to switch between uh, different views in uh, in a fabric lake house. So here you can switch by uh, between SQL Analytics endpoint. That's the one that we are currently here. So from here I can write a new SQL query like I did for example in uh, uh, in SQL Server Management Studios. So same thing here, select star from dim product, although select star is not the best practice, but this is just for the demo purposes. And you see I'm getting the same results. And I can also switch between lake house and SQL Analytics point, uh, endpoint views. So yeah, basically that's it. We just created our first lake house in Microsoft Fabric. That's all folks. If you like this video, please make sure to click this like button down below. Also, if you want to stay up to date with all the latest Microsoft Fabric and Power BI related things and get ready for DP600 exam, which is Microsoft Fabric Analytics Engineer, make sure to subscribe to Data Motor channel. See you soon. Music